Hello, I'm Tamara Banks, and welcome to Denver Decides. This community partnership is dedicated to accessible and transparent elections. The partnership includes the League of Women Voters of Denver, Interneighborhood Cooperation, and is presented by Denver 8 TV. Our mission today is to present a candidate form in anticipation of the general election coming up on Tuesday, November 6th. Among other offices, this election includes the candidates vying to represent constituents in Colorado's State House from District Number 7. House District 7 is located in far northeast Denver. Our format includes timed opening and closing statements from each of the candidates that will be followed by rounds of questions that have been submitted by the organizers of the forum. Since we do have a time limit, we may not be able to get to all of the questions submitted. I want to advise you here that there are two candidates on the November ballot for the seat in the Colorado House of Representatives. Republican candidate J. Frank Cusera was invited to this forum but did not reply. So let's begin by meeting the other candidate on the ballot for the seat, James Rashad Coleman. Mr. Coleman, welcome. Thanks for being here at this forum. Thank you, Tamara, for having me. Appreciate it. You bet. You will have one minute for your opening statement. And you can begin that now. Awesome. What's up, everybody? My name is James Coleman, and I'm the state representative for Colorado's House District 7. I'm running for re-election, and I'm excited to be able to serve you all again coming up here in 2019. House District 7, 7 represents uh, Green Valley Ranch, Montbello, Stapleton, Northeast, Park Hill, and also the airport, and over 90,000 people. So I'm blessed to be able to uh, work with folks who were here in the House District. Before I'm any of those things, I'm a proud husband of amazing wife, Shana, amazing children, James and Naomi, who are seven years old in second grade and go to school in the neighborhood. I'm also a man of faith, and I'm grateful and honored to be able to serve you. Excellent. Thank you, sir. So we're going to jump right into the questions for you. So my first question is, what are the two biggest issues facing your district, and how do you uh, plan to deal with these? And you will have one minute to answer. And can we begin? Okay. All right. Thank you, Tamara. So the two biggest issues that are facing our district, I still believe, number one is education. I think education is critical for all of our children, not just in the House District, but across the state of Colorado, to have a quality education. And so we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can, whether that's providing quality academic experience, making sure that our students know that they're safe amidst a lot of things and violence that have happened around our country, making sure that our students' wellness is taken care of, their whole person um, is critical for me, especially because I have two children myself and I understand how important it is to have that for our children. And the second thing for me is economic development. And while we want to make sure that we continue to have businesses thriving in our state and people having jobs, and not just um, jobs, but higher wages to be able to live in the state, we also want to make sure that people have a livable wage to find a place where they can live. And I think gentrification and a lot of other concerns regarding housing issues have been things that we really want to continue to focus on and improve in the state and in House District 7. Okay, thank you. So we'll ask a second question now. This is a long question. The bill, Extreme Risk Protection Order, also known as the Red Flag Bill, would allow families and law enforcement to seek court orders to remove firearms from a person whose behavior is deemed extremely dangerous to themselves or others. In the last session, the bill passed the House on a bipartisan vote of 37 to 23, then died in the Senate Affairs Committee. Now, if the bill is introduced in the 2019 session, would you support or oppose the red flag bill? And again, you have one minute to answer. Thank you, Tamara. So I would absolutely support the red flag bill, and here's why. I think no matter where you are in this country, people are afraid for their lives. We want to make sure that not only we're thinking about folks who are responsible gun owners, but we're also thinking about folks who have experienced tragedy. And so those folks who have experienced tragedy and hopefully preventing folks from experiencing tragedy, it's important that if someone feels as if someone is unstable or should not have a firearm, they should be able to make a phone call and let folks know about that to prevent further issues from happening. So that, for me, is something I supported this year, and I would support that again in the 2019 session. Okay. And our third question for our candidate. Tabor has had a big impact on the state and remains controversial. How should Tabor be dealt with? That's a great question. So 
You know, Tabor, for those folks who don't know, ultimately makes it so that we as voters, you as voters, have the ability to determine if we're going to have tax increases to pay for things in our state. There's a lot of ballot initiatives you'll be voting for coming up here in November. I think it's important that we do hear from the folks in the state about that. But what I wish we could do is figure out ways that we can retain some of that funding, especially for education. You know, we're looking at potentially $200 million across the state of Colorado that we could retain if we decided as voters we wanted that money to go specifically for a cause. And when we have a huge deficit in public education here in the state of Colorado, when our teachers really need funding, when our schools really need funding, it'd be great for us to be able to utilize Tabor and the good part of Tabor, which is funding for things we say as a state we want, but making sure our voters still have a voice in determining what we do with tax dollars. Okay, and before we continue on with our next question, I just want to remind our viewers that we do have another candidate who is uh, your opponent, and that is Mr. J. Frank Cusera, who uh, did not reply to our request to, to invite him to the forum this evening. So with that, our next question is, by many measures, marijuana has been a success. Do you think it is working well, and what tweaks might the state still need to make? Thank you. So I want to also take a few seconds just to acknowledge that Jay is a great man. I had a chance to meet him earlier this year, and uh, I'm sure he could have been here if he would have uh, if he would have been able to. So thank you for running against me and making sure I'm not resting on my laurels. Uh, to answer that question, um, I think it's important um, that we focus on how we utilize those funds. I'm, I'm privileged to sit on the Tony Gramps' board. Tony Gramps' board serves students with um, mental health issues and, and instabilities, and the funding that we got in the recent year in a bill that we ran um, with the legislature for funding, we were able to receive additional funding through a House amendment rather than a bill for um, programs like Tony Gramps's, which was funded through Marijuana Task Cash Fund. I think what we have to do though is make sure we're educating our voters specifically on what that funding is for. A lot of folks thought that funding was gonna be used for education and in the classroom, and much of that funding for class for education is being used on capital development and buildings. So making sure that we're educating folks on what that funding is used for, making sure we're doing right with the funding we say we were going to do, and making sure that we continue to use it in the right way so that it impacts the state in a positive way. Okay, just a few more questions here. Colorado has fallen near the bottom of all states in funding education. What specifically would you like to see done to change that? Thank you for that question. And so I alluded to something that I think would be a really great effort regarding Tabor and funding education. Um, you know, we are able to knock off a little bit of the negative factor, which is ultimately this roughly almost a billion dollar deficit in public education we have. But that's such an incremental step. You know, this year we also ran another bill that provides funding for teachers who want to go to college, get a degree, and have their last year of college paid for. But that's such an incremental step that it's encouraging our teachers, it's providing funding for our schools. So I think we have to do a better job, not only at the state level providing funding, but better partnerships with our local school di districts across the state to make sure that we're supportive of using that money that we do have for education effectively, while initiatives that are on the ballot this year will potentially increase funding. So we have to figure out ways to increase funding, but also make sure we manage the funding we have effectively. Okay, here's a question for you. Yep. Who are the major contributors to your election campaign? That's a great question. So thanks for asking. You know, the major contributors to my election campaign have been the people. You know, I've been blessed to receive a lot of individual contributions, but I've also been able to receive contributions from folks I've had a chance to get to know over the past six years. And so when I say the people, I also do mean folks who are in the lobby, uh, folks who represent various businesses. And it's important to know that when I receive those fundings, that does not buy my vote. What it does is it makes sure that I continue to have those relationships have those relationships with the folks who I work with every day, January through May at the Capitol, and make sure I do not lose integrity when I'm focusing on the issues the folks in my community want me to focus on. Okay. So this uh, brings us to uh, the end of the questions, and now we'd like you to give your uh, closing statements. You Typically we have a minute and a half, but if you want it, you can have two minutes. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So those of you who know me know I could talk for a long time, so I won't be that long. What I will say is I am asking for your vote for re-election, regardless of Mr. Kuchera being here or not. Uh, it's important that I ask for your support. Uh, whether I was uh, someone's running against me or not, it's important that I earn your support. I think right now in politics, people have lost trust. People don't believe that we're here representing their interests. And I want to make sure I say that because your vote matters to me. We won the primary election last year, last time in my first election. We only won by 80 votes. Every vote matters. 
So I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking you to support me in this re-election so I can go back to the State House, continue doing good work that is informed by you. My policy, or my philosophy, rather, on politics is that I can be a thought leader, I can be intellectual, but I need you to inform me of what it is that you want me to do. Reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, email, phone calls. You guys know how to get a hold of me, and my information will be made public via this uh, post. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve you now. I'm looking forward to serving you in the future. All right. Thank you, James. One more reminder that there are two candidates on the ballot seeking the seat in the Colorado House of Representatives from District 7. Republican candidate J. Frank Husera was invited but did not reply. Thank you to Democratic candidate James Rashad Coleman for being here. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Yeah. And our thanks to the Denver Decides partners, including Inter-Neighborhood Cooperation and the League of Women Voters of Denver. Denver Decides is presented by Denver 8 TV. Remember, the election is Tuesday, November 6th. Let your voice be heard. Be sure you are registered and be sure and vote. For complete election information online, go to DenverDecides.com. I'm Tamara Banks. Thanks for being with us.